problems we're having with water is that bacteria is able to now live in chlorine and the toxins that are created from chlorine uh, when they come in contact with organic matter have just come out and being, and being published that there are 170 times more toxic than any known substance we've ever, the man has ever created. So we're seeing that not only are we creating a water that, that, uh, that bacteria can live in, or chlorinated water that bacteria can live in, but we're now creating a, a water that's loaded with super toxins. And they're not doing anything about it. The world's, the world's letting it happen even when they know these, these toxins exist in the water. Uh, we're still not changing our water treatment methods because I think you know there's some and is it apathy when you when you know something but you don't want to do anything about it kind of you just get we get complacent and we just say well you know it's, we don't have any other uh, means of treatment and we do have other means of treatment but what, what's going to happen is these treatments are going to satisfy our needs either ozone and UV and those technologies are, are uh, uh, or, or, or late or too late. We've already created a toxic environment for our water and what we have to deal with now is the vibrational aspects of the water molecule and water, water itself vibrationally is unhealthy. Uh, water is energy seeking, it's constantly seeking energy and the fact that we have stripped a great deal of the, the life force and energy from the water molecule that we have to now replace that energy back. We can't strip the energy away and expect it to, re to return on its own. And so the, the, the future of water treatment has to deal with the ability to revitalize, recharge, reinvigorate, uh, re-energize the water. And the technologies exist. Uh, and then we now know that we can use frequencies and program the water to resist certain disease and bacteria. And so the future of water treatment is, looks very promising, but the problem is, is that we interfere with the big business and chemical factories that produce these billions of dollars of chemicals that we put in our water treatment. The flocculating chemicals uh, that flocculate all the solids out of the water and the wastewater. Horrible, horrendous chemicals. And then it's ran right, right back through the chlorinated, chlorination process, just totally de-energized, stripped of any life. And then it's piped to every home in, in, you know, in America. And this, this is the kind of stuff that all the disease markers are in this water. And we're wondering why we're in a disease state. It's in the water. 90% of all disease is waterborne. But the disease markers that are left behind in the water that we that we so-called treat and filter, and these are these are, we're talking about cities that get an A plus for clean water, but yet the disease markers are all through the water. They say, what's a disease marker? Well, disease marker is sometimes like it's the memory of disease, or the memory of the toxin is is shows up in the water. Uh, very similar to homeopathic medicine, it's a, in that regard, but it doesn't change the fact that these minute uh, memory uh, uh, particles, if you will, are in our water, and we're drinking this water up every day and cons consistently. And over time, you know, it's showing up because disease is, I think, disease is a little bit out of gone out of out of the control. And it's not just in this in this country, but it's in South America, it's in Asia, it's in Europe, it's in Russia, it's in all it's all around. What are they doing? They're poisoning their water to make it safe to drink. And now that's one thing to say. Well, we didn't know any better. But now we do know better. We know that revitalized water exists. Re, you know, re-energized water does exist. Water is alive, at least to uh, we can say that to a degree uh, with some of the photographs that were uh, done by Dr. Emoto in Japan. We know there's some aspects, some living aspect to water, uh, at least some phenomenons that have yet to be explained uh, from the water crystals, the uh, photographs that have been taken. And I went to Japan to verify these photographs myself. I took the photographs. I saw with my own eyes. Um, so I know that uh, that you know water is not just H2O, it's not just a simple substance, it's very complex and uh, we have to learn more about it. There's a lot we can learn uh, you know if, if, if people would uh, begin to do research and again there are people like Victor Schauberger who taught taught 50 years ago that this is the way if you want to treat the water here's how you do it. Use the natural principle. Observe nature and follow nature's principles and build these build these principles into your water treatment plants. And if we did, we would probably not be suffering from cancer and all the other diseases that plague our, our world today. Because we could actually prevent disease from occurring in the water before it leaves to go into our homes and begin to end up in our bodies. And, and that's, the, that's, that's if we want to get futuristic and say, do we want to live in a healthy planet or do we want to just make as much money off the sick as we can before, before we all die a horrible death? 
uh, I say there's a way to turn it around and live in, a, live in a healthy planet. But we have to start with the water. The water feeds us all, vibratorily, vibrationally. Uh, it's the one thing that we can do to prevent disease and, and, and live a healthier, healthier life. Kind of, you know, that in a nutshell. Any, any other questions? Um, what, um, can you describe some of the uh, technologies or methodologies uh, that you like to see um, employed to purify our water? Thank okay, well, first of all, you have to deal with water in, in, on two or, two or three different levels. The first, the first level is you're dealing with the memory issue. You have the disease markers and the memory of disease that's, that's in the water. And so what you want to do is you want to strip the memory, that memory out of the water. There's multiple ways to do that. Vortexing and spinning the water left and right uh, have ability to strip some of the memory if you consistently do that. That doesn't mean you can run the water through a left spin uh, vortex cycle and then run it through a right spin vortex cycle and you strip the memory from that water. You partially strip the memory. It takes a great deal of vortices to erase the entire memory of the water. Uh, that's one ask. That's one way to strip the memory of the water molecule, uh, the, the memory of the, uh, out of the water molecule. But the other way is to magnetism works fantastic as long as you vortex your water through the magnetic field. Uh, again, you have to allow water to breathe. breathe. Water breathes, and the vortex is is the is the same way we breathe. When we breathe, we're sucking in the air. When the you know that's not being. I'm not pu pushing air down your mouth. Nobody's pushing air. There's no way that I can force air into your mouth. If we didn't open up and our cells didn't vacuum the energy into the cell and vacuum the energy through our mouths, and we wouldn't we wouldn't breathe. We wouldn't we would die. So it's a vacuum energy that goes on that, that, that allows us to live. Well, the water in the same regard has that same function in that it breathes. And it vacuums, those vortex are very important because it, it vacuums the, the ether, or the starlight, or whatever the energy, the piranha, into, the, into itself. And so that's what feeds the water. Um, so the surroundings are very important, you know, for water. So feeding the water energy uh, is important so you have to deal with the getting rid of the memory which is like cleaning up the disease getting rid of the disease and then you have to rebuild the body or rebuild the the, the energy of the, the the water body or the body of water and that way you're covering both parameters you know you can't you can't really you don't really want to charge a diseased water you know you're really amplifying that diseased effect so it's like oh wow because I tell people you know, I said, well, how do you, you know, treat your water? I said, well, is it full of disease markers? And they're like, what's disease markers? And how do you know? And I said, well, was it tap water? Is it recirculated throughout your city? Is the water being reused in the, in the wastewater plant and then being sent right back into your homes like most cities do? Uh, is it surface water coming from the rivers that where all the toxins are being dumped into the river and all your pollutants like it is in Texas? The Trinity River feeds most of us. It feeds most of us. It's a horribly toxic river and it shows up in the water crystal. So it depends on what type of water source that you're, you're, you're working with. But if you're working with a, a water that's basically from the well, and it's a clean clean source of water, then you just need to re-energize the water and you're filtering it and then you just need to revitalize that water. But if you're dealing with a toxic base, in other words, a water that's being treated several times through a municipal plant and then back through your, to your homes and maybe, maybe it's you know toilet water six weeks ago, you know, who knows? That water needs to be stripped of its memory and uh, in that in that in that regard, so there's a number of ways, and people can get into this. There's nothing, it's nothing. There's nothing secretive about Victor Schauberger's work. There's nothing secretive about uh, you know ways to purify water naturally and energe energetically. Uh, it's on the internet. The internet's a wonderful place to, to look look these devices up. There's a lot of a lot of let's say charlatans, if you will. There's a lot of people out there charging too much for water treatments. Neekin makes a really good water energizer. Uh, there's a lot of good water energizers out there for for a couple hundred dollars. You can you can get started, or you can read the books like I did and build your own. You know, Victor Schauber has gives you a lot of ideas. Uh, the Living Energies uh, book, uh, Colin Coates. Uh, there's a number of books in and around uh, uh, Victor Schauber that talks about how he, you know, basically. Uh, recharge or saw how nature recharged water, and I just looked at, looked at it through his books and saw, read these books and saw that I could add frequency, where uh, I thought it might make a difference in these key points like the apex of the vortex, or uh, you know, you just spinning the water, just spiraling the water through magnetic uh, beads, for example. That was a way to spin the water through an energy field, magnetic field. There's lots of ways to do it. 
you know, once I saw that there's multiple ways to do it, then I saw that I could apply this to different, like agricultural, uh, for uh, wastewater, for drinking water, for swimming pools, uh, finding different applications. Water could be manipulated in multiple ways to, to, to depending on what your needs are and what you're trying to work, what you're working toward, what, do you, what is your goal. In some instances, you want bacteria to grow, so you don't, you don't, you know, you don't want to suppress the bacteria because there are lots of good bacteria. Water is loaded with bacteria, but it's healthy bacteria, so we don't test for it. We don't even count it because it's just not harmful. But living water is generally loaded with bacteria, but it's not harmful bacteria, so it's not, it's not, a, not an issue. It's not tested. Uh, it's the bad bacteria that shows up in de-energized water. De-energized water goes way on down the plateau. And when it goes down, it's no, it's no different than human tissue. When the tissue drops below a natural threshold, it's, it's healthy through threshold, or, a, or a, a plant, for example. If a plant doesn't receive all of its nutrients, it's weak, then bacteria and, you know, fungus or, or uh, uh, you know, pests of, of whatever nature are going to attack that plant. It's no different when the water drops below a natural threshold. Bacteria and disease will thrive in that, in that, in that, uh, that vibration, in that vibration. Because that is the where disease begins in this low vibration. Well, we've not water is not natural. That's not a natural vibration for water. We have we have man man has done this to the water. We have de-energized water so bad that we are creating these horrible creatures, and they are amassing by the well. It's too numerous to count, as we say in the in the bacteriological world. The bacteria that's growing, uh, that's surviving these these horrible chemicals that, that we're putting in our water. They're surviving. Uh, they're mutating, and uh, and they're they're growing faster than we'll be able to stop. In fact, we, we may have already gone too far. We may have, we may not be able to even correct it at this point. But whatever the future holds, the only way we know that we're going to defend ourselves is with frequency. That all things can be destroyed. I mean, pathogens of, of any of any sort can be destroyed through path, through frequency, as Wright taught us. So the future may depend on us very well knowing and understanding the, the, the frequency uh, and how to kill bacteria at a frequency level, not at a chemist, chemical level. Chemicals may not be the may not be an option because they've been they've had years to adapt. And this is my biggest concern. This is the biggest concern I have is that pathogens are going to be able to survive uh, these chemicals and they are surviving these, these chemicals and they are and if they and if chemicals can't kill them uh, how are antibiotics going to kill them when they get inside of us? How are, they, how are we going to be able to stop them inside of our bodies when they take off and they start replicating and they, and they, and they these plagues, these, these 21st century plagues that are coming? How are we going to be able to stop them? Because they're going to be traveling through the water. You can believe it.